again and welcome to Man's Talk. My, I'm Tammy Simmons. <laughs> oh, goodness. And I'm Carla Garrett. And apparently I'm not supposed to touch that. I never noticed it coming out of there before. Really? I don't, apparently, you know, sometimes things catch you off guard. Um, hi, welcome hi. to Man's Talk. Uh, um, welcome to our fans on Facebook, yeah, too. Yeah. Um, so how about that wind last night? Was it crazy at your house? So a crazy wind and a, like a like a squall, like real yeah. rain for like half an hour. Oh, I was I on the show. The rain, but... um, I do a podcast on Monday nights at eight p.m. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, when I took off my earphones, I was like, "What is that?" And it was like <laughs> pouring. But we had just gotten our Christmas lights up. Yay! I'm so happy. It's like the Aren't most they fun. It's like the most American thing I've ever done. And I know, you know, I'm turning 50 in a couple of months and I feel like it's like a pinnacle of something, right? Like, like look at me, I'm little, an adult, I have Christmas lights. Yeah, like it a little is. kernel at the back of your mind. You know, I've, I'm an immigrant. I have traveled all over the world. I've lived so many different places in America. So I've never really had that sense of home. home right. And so this it just is, felt it is. like, yes, I'm yeah. a grown up now. Yeah, it's, I always think it's like, it's like you had said, I read, oh, this is the first home. This is your first house. You know, you're, you, right. you've rented and everything. And I often think it must be kind of weird for people who buy and sell their house all the time. You know, like, do you get that same? I don't know. I mean, I watch a lot of like property shows. Yeah. That's sort of my like uh, thing. Uh, what would the uh, hidden pleasure, guilty, yeah. guilty pleasure, which apparently now everyone knows about. And, you know, some of those flippers, I guess they get into, uh, I think it's if it's a business. I guess, it, yeah. Or a I, home, right? Yeah, I just think it's got to be weird. I don't know. But it is, I, I, I commented back on yours. We have a slacking, totally slacking outdoor this year. Um, it made me so happy my neighbor across the yeah. street actually commented and she said, oh, it looks really pretty yeah. from here. So that made yeah, me happy. Yeah, we, we had a really good thing going last year. I think it was last year. But the little, they, you know, everything breaks. Yeah. The lights still work, but the clips don't work. So you I can't. I mean, I was pretty impressed. These are, I mean, it was. You bought the net. No, oh, we, bought, we bought wires, yeah. but we also, because we've never done this before, we weren't sure, like, how much do you need? Yeah. How much goes in one yeah. tree? So we had a lot. We had, like, five yeah. bowls yeah. on one string. They're yeah. LEDs, and they yeah. look like they're going to last for a while. They probably so. Will. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. My neighbor on next door, so across the street, Con Connie said, oh, it looks so pretty. And Brink, my neighbor to the right, I guess, left. The side. The side. Uh, he was out there doing some lights, too. And then he commented and said, oh, no, I'm going to have to step <laughs> up my game. And I was like, oh, maybe we'll yeah. turn into one of those cold well, we, we, um <laughs> We did, um, we, used, we generally, and I haven't probably found any in the last couple of years, what we were doing is we would go out after Christmas and buy. Oh, because, you know, some of them are, yeah, that's some smart. of the lights are really, like, some of the lights we've had, I'm like, I'm not paying that much money for Christmas lights, but if you can get them, you know, you right. get them at 50% off or 75% off. Oh, I should definitely look yeah. for that. I mean, these we probably And I'm trying from. to purge a lot of stuff in my house, so I have many, many Christmas lights. If if anyone has a recommendation, and maybe you do too, for We Heart West, we want to do a... Uh, you know, sometimes you'll see on rail trails and stuff, someone will decorate like one tree. Yeah. So we want to do that somewhere on the west side. But, you know, I've been out on all the trails and there aren't really any of the like evergreen the, sort of the pine, right like Christmassy mm. trees. There are just a lot of everything's lost their leaves and yeah. it would just look weird. Yeah, they just be like <laughs> random lights. So if anyone has a recommendation, let us know uh, at itsmanchtalk at gmail.com. If yes, there's like is. a great Christmas tree yep. somewhere, because we would love to come and decorate decorate that nice. uh, and if not this year then something yeah. for for next year definitely so that's all the happy news happy now stop. i'm gonna get mad <laughs> well and it ties into what i had printed so you before we started taping uh carla was saying did you notice that there's a new definition for the word anti-vaxxer and i thought what what do you mean new so like when i hear anti-vaxxer i think of the person who doesn't believe in any vaccines refuses all vaccines and that you know and that's their prerogative but i also think that in that lump is now anybody who questions any vaccines oh, yeah. like if you have children i don't i don't have kids we you don't have kids but i mean the list that they vaccinate children with so early and so many things at once 
I, so, I, so I, I actually I'm went skeptical. and looked. Um, so I found a couple of uh, d- uh, data points. Yeah. And basically, I think in the 80s, there were uh, three designated vaccines. Then uh, it became more. And now, if you look at the actual CDC recommended schedule, I believe it's 72 doses. Now, it doesn't yeah. mean 72 injections. Something like an MMR would be three doses of something because right. you're getting a measles, measles and mumps and a rubella. Yeah. Yep. But it would only be one jab. And so I was just, you know, I was online and I saw people were circulating a, a definition that I had seen before that had already this year been extended. So let's just back up for two seconds and say the following. So generally, we've had definitions of words Mm -hmm. that uh, generally are agreed upon. And Mm -hmm. it's kind of a big deal when people change Change. the word, right? Uh, One silly one I can think of that happened in the last 10 years that literally made, did not literally, so that's funny, made my head explode, was the term literally, which they changed to mean both literally as in, yes, that literally Literally. (laughs) happened, and changed literally to literally mean figuratively. Which is not literally. So, which isn't, right? Because that's that's the colloquial way you use it. Like, Hmm. I just said it literally made my head explode. Clearly, it didn't. It might have made my hair Hmm. do something funky. But (laughs) So, so it is kind of a big deal when they change words and meanings. So, Merriam-Webster earlier this year had said anti-vaxxers were now including anyone who was anti-mandate, right? So, they Not even anti-skeptical. So they, so so this is the new one, but but oh, so so sorry. maybe like a few months ago, it had changed to say you know if you're anti-mandate, which is a wide wide swath of people who aren't actually against vaccines. These are people who are against being forced to inject an experimental gene therapy into your body, right? So now they've expanded it, so, and I'm going to yeah. have uh, Tammy read it. So yeah, that so we that give we you give you the actual words. I started to write them down. So it says, definition of anti-vaxxer. A person who opposes the use of vaccines or regulations mandating vaccination. And then it says, especially a parent who opposes having his or her child vaccinated. And then it says, often used before another noun. So they're using examples, anti-vaxxer sentiment anti-vaxxer parents um so basically what they've done is they've taken a term that the state hmm. has invested an incredible amount of time money and effort into um vilifying mm-hmm. right so i mean anyone you know i i remember actually years ago someone called me an ax- anti-vaxxer I, I think it had also something to do with mandates back then. And I remember, like, my hackles like, rising and like, being I'm like, not... what? No, because, you know, there's this sense that you feel like that means you're anti-science. Um, and... Yeah, and that you're just, right, there is definitely a tone that anti-vaxxers are just all crazy. Right. And and so it turns out, I mean, I've been going down this rabbit hole. I'm, I, I, I haven't stopped yet. But one of the really interesting things I I don't feel like I ever made the association before, is it occurred to me in the last few weeks, I was like, why is there no, why is there immunity, liability immunity, right? So anyone who gets an injection, if something does go wrong, then you can't actually sue Pfizer, you can't Mm -hmm. sue Moderna, you can't sue AstraZeneca, because uh, they don't have to stand behind their products. What you can do is you can file a claim with the government. 99% of those claims are still pending. So good luck. Um, And so I was like, oh, like, what was the origin? Like, why why does that work that way? Because that doesn't really work that way for any other products, right? Especially if you're going to mandate something. If you're going to make people do something. And they should have to. It should work, right? So it turns out that in 86, uh, they, the, the insurance industry, they had presented all the data to the insurance industries and said, okay, insure these products. And the insurance industries looked at the data and, said, and no. they said, no thanks. 
Which means they think they were going to lose money based on the data yeah. because they said these aren't safe and efficient in the per whatever standards the insurance mm. industry was using, which in the end was Benny's. It was money, right? right like follow right. the money. Like you could follow the money mm. on everything that's happened in the last two years. And you'd be shocked and horrified. But I'm going to see if I can not get this episode banned. <laughs> Who probably already is. Um, so if if being opposed to mandates Dates. and everything makes you an anti-vaxxer, there are many, many anti-vaxxers at the state legislature, apparently, because... Um, I heard there are like 30 bills, right? Well, or... and I only pulled up this one because I was like, oh, we can talk about other ones, too, but... um. This one I saw because Representative Tim Lang, who was on the commission or committee that dealt with reopening and, you know, all the regulations mm -hmm. and stuff and how we get from closed to back to open. Um, he also very frequently, um, I haven't seen it lately, but he will post um, the hospital census information mm -hmm. that shows how many hospital beds and how many emergency room beds and things like that. So he's definitely got a wealth of information revolving around um, this particular virus because he's been, you know, in the middle of it. And I've been very impressed. Uh, I watched some of these committee hearings and I really did like how he would balance, you know, he let people yeah. testify and then he would, you know, counteract with data points. So, so you know, it, it behooves people in the state to be alarmist, right? Because they're protecting mm. their decisions that they've made. And no one likes to be criticized, especially not when you totally messed it up. <laughs> um, and so, you know, they would come in and they'd have this extremely alarmist data. Amongst other things, a data point I'm sure people back home have heard is, oh, the ICU is filling up yeah. or there are not enough beds. What we know is ICU beds are usually very, very limited. They actually always get overrun yep. in every flu season. It's not an unusual thing. It is not something to be hysterical about. So, you know, in one case, they were like, oh, the beds are overrun. And and Tim, to his credit, was sort of like, well, let's just break it down. Let's just say this is how yep. many beds there are. This is the percentage. Right. If you're not in ICU, there's still all these other beds. Yep. So part of what you have to watch, too, because I know this was in the news this week, too, is someone said, oh, well, you know, they had to drive a patient to Albany. Okay? Yes, I saw that. So, so, so whenever you hear something that scares you a lot, you might want to be like, hmm, all right, let me think about this a little. So it was like, what would behoove you if you were trying to scare people? Oh, I Distance. don't know. Send a patient to Albany and then spend three weeks talking about that one dude you had right. to send somewhere because that sounds awfully scary. Right. So, you know, I think there's a bit of that happening as well. So there is a bill. Um, I did not. Maybe. I don't know. I think it was HB 1210, but maybe HB 2150. I don't really care what the number is. Um, it, the prime sponsor is Tim Lang. Also sponsoring is uh, Representative Janine Nader, who's from Merrimack, uh, Mark McLean from Manchester, Kim Rice, who's the Speaker Pro Tem from Hudson, Senator Kevin Avard, uh, David Binford, Bob, Senator Bob Guida, Tony Lekas, Herschel Nunes, uh, Senator Rick Yardy from Bedford, Michael Boards, Juliet Harvey Bolia, and Diane Power. So wide range of support. Very short. I love little short bills. <laughs> Being enacted by the state, by the Senate and House of Representatives in general court convened. One, new paragraph, communicable disease, immunization registry, opportunity to opt into the registry, amend RSA 141C colon 20F by inserting after paragraph two the following new paragraph. Each patient or the patient's parent or guardian, if the patient is a minor, shall be given the opportunity to opt in to the immunization registry. No patient's personal data, such as name, address, date of birth, immunization, or vaccination information, shall be entered into the registry without the explicit written opt-in consent of the patient or the patient's parent or guardian. And it will take effect um, upon passage. Nice. Now, what he posted earlier was, that a reminder that in just 2018, 80% of the citizens of the state of New Hampshire who voted, they voted to protect their personal information from government collection when they 
when we amended our New Hampshire Constitution to say an individual's right to live free from governmental intrusion in private or personal information is natural, essential, and inherent. So if being an anti-vaxxer says you actually are going to support the New Hampshire Constitution Constitution. and what the people in this state literally just said they wanted. 81% of Granite Staters voted for that right. constitutional because amendment. It, because people do believe that your personal and private information it's, is it's, yours. Yeah. It is not the state's. It does not belong well, to the I community. Mean, the fight right now is apparently the state thinks they own you. So the, all this <laughs> bill would do, and he said, this bill simply requires the state to ask for your permission before adding your pr- private medical or personal name, address, phone, et cetera, into the state database. And the reason for that is actually because I forget when, but it was also probably 18-ish. There was, New Hampshire never had a vaccine registry. And that was actually something that was really awesome. And then in, I think it was 18, I stand to be corrected, they actually ended up passing some kind of registry. And I remember at the time, and I wasn't that actively involved in in health freedom, right? right? Like I'm like, we're getting oppressed in a lot of ways. You know, everyone's got to pick a lane. Unfortunately, now they made this my lane too. <laughs> so here we go. But that the the reason they're doing that bill is because the way the the previous legislation was written is it was an opt out. Right. So what they... happened was they're like, okay, well, it, I'm gonna put you on a list, and then you can ask to go off the list. Is a worse position to be in than. Uh, can, can you we, put me on the list? Right, because um, somebody had commented on this thread that um, in the Hannaford, what you sign when you get the vaccine, say even like the flu vaccine, it's the opt out, opt out option is like buried. Nobody's reading, reading that it. when you're standing at the yeah. counter getting a flu vaccine or any other vaccine for that matter. So that'll be interesting to watch. Um, I would have, I mean, you know, it'll be vilified by the Democrats because they think, you know. I mean, I have to say, you know, I don't, I, 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 I'm I, trying not to spend so much time on Twitter. Twitter is Twitter's evil. <laughs> it's evil. It's evil. I regret so hard uh, even jumping in there, but whatever. Um, so sometimes I'll just go look at the, there's, uh, you can look at state rep yeah. tweets and just watch the, at- the people. It's, I, it's, 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 it's apparently I'm part of a cult, a, a, a death cult. That's what they call it. Like you're a death cult. And I'm like, the only thing I want is for people to be able to make their (laughs) own rational decisions based on the information they have available to the best of their abilities. And it's like how that translates to... The, I don't the know. The name well, calling I mean, and the vitriol. And it, it, all- it's so, well, I was, I was thinking the same thing yesterday because I saw a post on Facebook or somewhere. I don't even, it must have been on Facebook and people protesting something. And, and it was just like so angry. There's just so much um, vitriol and anger and hate involved. And I was like, well, okay, try to step back, try to be objective. Are we doing, am I doing, are my people doing the same thing? And I'm like, no. Okay, I have never wished anyone dead. I have never uh, been reckless. I certainly, you know, I've just done what I do. I'm a healthy person and, you know, I've gone on with my life as I expect other people to do. Um, but if you actually go and, and honestly, I mean, I don't know, I'm pretty sure some of, uh, the enemies of Liberty watch this show. So maybe this one's for you is, uh, if you write anything about unvaccinated people, may I suggest that before you post it, perhaps replace the word unvaccinated with Jew, black woman, uh, and See if, if the way right. it sounds sounds like something you actually want to stand behind. Yep. Because here's the thing. You can call it whatever you want, but literally all we are claiming is my body, my choice. Yep. You don't own me. You don't get to tell me what I have to inject myself with. Yep. Finished. And so... Don't vilify the unvaccinated. People have different reasons for doing mm-hmm. different things and stop being a bigot. 
All right. Okay, what's then. the next book? So anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so I just literally grabbed because I didn't have time. I was like, there's really no good, no major news stories no, in Manchester. So, so some things I did learn last night on my podcast because we had great uh, speakers from the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance on there. So there were 89 bills that were remanded from last year that okay. are coming up in January. Okay. And so, you know, we got to keep an eye out for that because that's actually going to be right, the first week in January. Because if they actually keep January, a bill... There must have been a reason, reason they kept it. Yeah, so so we probably want to keep an eye on that. This then, one was a local one. I don't know. I would imagine you know about it. I didn't realize. Is um, it a crypto one? No, I did. I started to print that one. That one was very long. Um, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't have good. time to read it. Okay, so this one is House Bill 1503. Prime sponsored is Keith Ammon from New Boston. Um this bill exempts the developer, seller, or facilitator of the exchange of an open blockchain token from certain securities laws. So this is obviously written very specifically as a result to the um, government harassment and I, I like I don't even overreach um, targeted against, prosecution yeah, of people they don't like um, library, which is Manchester based. Manchester based. Um, they created blockchain, which is open and free. Anybody can use. And they created a token. This I'm, I'm very sub, non-technically summarizing. They created a token that basically was an incentive for people to add content to the platform to in, just to encourage people to use the platform. So we're going to give you this little token that you can use for things on the platform. Yeah, it's like getting a Chuck E. It, cheese Right. Uh, it's like getting thingy. a free coffee on right. after you spend $100, you know, and somehow the Securities and Exchange Commission <laughs> took this to say that they were selling um, oh, shares so, so, so or something. Just, just in, in the shortest way I can summarize this, this is basically what happened. So blockchain technology and crypto is very new. So no one really yeah. understands it. Certainly not the Securities and Exchange Commission or anyone in the government, right? So technology went faster than the government's regulations. Yes. Then people started building like really... Um, dynamic and interesting mm. businesses, right? And the blockchain basically is just a public ledger. It's just a way to say that this and this match each other, kind of like accounting um, different Dual, columns. Double entry. Double, yeah, double entry, right? And so they, um, so they basically, the Securities and Exchange Commission were like, we can't tell you if this is a security or not. Have your lawyers do whatever they think is right, and then we'll let you know. So companies have literally been like, okay, I think this is the way <laughs> that we are complying with all the laws. And these are companies that are spending millions yep. of dollars on like top-notch Silicon Valley tech lawyers. Yep. And then the SEC went, yeah. well, we don't think that complies. Okay, please tell me how to comply. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Why don't you go talk to your lawyers again, and then we'll let you know if you got it right next time. Right. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that is not the way. That, I mean, if you're going <laughs> to regulate something, work. that's definitely not the method on which to determine no, what those regulations are. No, because you're also are. destroying people's businesses and their efforts, and, and blockchain is going to revolutionize so many things. It's a way we can start to keep government mm -hmm. transparent. I'm like, we should be able to like put all of these things uh, and on there at some I'm thinking, stage. why did I pull up these bills? And it was funny because I had, I, it was on the fly, you know, 10 minutes before I'm supposed to leave. <laughs> and I'm like, I should probably pull up some bills. What I did was I put in um, Jason Osborne and saw what he had co-sponsored. <laughs> I figured hey, that's a good place to start. Anything that Jason Osborne sponsors or co-sponsors has got to be halfway decent. Um, two, two not, um, well, it's not, not critical. These are big, these are important things. For a variety of difference. They're not about vaccines. They're not about, you know, the Securities and Exchange Commission. But there are 30 bills trying to reg uh, cut the emergency powers of the governor as well because... Uh, and and, I, and I, I need some attention. Um, this one, which seems like a no-brainer to me, but I'm always amazed that it can't, <laughs> it never passes. It'll um, be a brainer. Again, Tim Lang is the prime sponsor. Um Bill authorizes a waiver of the driver education requirement if a father, mother, guardian, or other responsible adult 
provides equivalent classroom instruction and behind the wheel training. Why in God's name can parents in New Hampshire not teach their children to drive and that be sufficient? I was horrified when I learned that that was not the that's case. A, it's it's absurd. Like, my oh, father taught me really? to drive. Yeah. And I, you know, that, I don't my know mom that's taught a, me and she her, her lesson to me, it was in Afrikaans, so it was like, alles wat jy doen, doen jy starig, which means everything you do, do it slowly. Yes, there you go. <laughs> I, my father used to take me on itty bitty skinny roads and make me do the three point turn. And when I went to do my test, they said, okay, do a three point turn. And I did. And I was like, okay, that's like a U turn because I was on right. a, he used to make me go on roads like this. Um, and the other one that I p printed, because we're literally going to run out of time, um, House Bill 1298. Um, it, Glenn Cordelli is the prime sponsor. Um, increases the income threshold for the education freedom accounts from 300% of the poverty level, which is about 79,000 for a family of four to 500% of the poverty level. I, so that's, a, that's should, another step. It is another step. We should do away with it. Why mm. should we do away with the income requirement? Because actually, you know what? We should just treat everyone equally. Mm. I agree. Wild notion. But, but, and because every time you put in a qualifier, you're actually increasing the government because now someone has to go look and determine that. So instead of people going, oh, let's improve these kids to go learn the way they need to learn, you're now going, show me all your income. Show me your IRS papers. Show me this. Show me that. Show me yep. this. And now we've created this I mean, I this agree. I would love it. I don't think it should. I don't think we should exclude certain families. Um but in the reality of legislation, I also know that right now it's at 300%. If we inc increase it to five, we're already checking for 300%. Right. So if we check for 500%, it will open the doors for choice for education for more more kids in New Hampshire. And eventually we will get to the point where income won't matter. Um, yes, I am just of the thought, although this is just me, I understand the sausage making is incremental. Mm, I just sometimes. would like things to happen faster. Because well, sometimes we're... faster, sometimes slower. It depends. Right? Yes. <laughs> it's a double, it, yeah, it depends. Some of those things we want to move very, very slowly. Um, uh, but the good news is New Hampshire was just rated the top, top most free place. state in the country. So yeah, shocking, I know. Um, yeah, we're going to be out of time. They gave us two two minute warning. Um, if you know, oh, do that first because we didn't have it last week. Uh, check out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, Stories of Hope, uh, available on Amazon and on my website, CarlaGarrick.com. Um, if you know of any amazing Christmas lights displays in Manchester or right on the peripheral, maybe, um, but re preferably in Manchester, if you could email those addresses to manchtalk at gmail.com, I'd love to share those next week. Um, Dan and I might stock the trolley tour. Ooh. Because I don't want to go on the trolley tour because they require masks. But what? who's to stop us from driving behind them and see, seeing the light show? I went on the so. trolley tour once. It was a lot of fun. And then went to the Courier and yeah. did a whole thing. It was great. Yeah. Anyways, Courier, Courier.org. You can go there on Sundays and have brunch in the, caf in the cafe. It's wonderful. Absolutely. And anyways, that's all we got for this week. Um, good weather so far. No s snow coming this week, though. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, get your I'm shovels ready. out, find your scrape your ice scrapers, and we will see you next week. Take care now. Bye. Bye.